I'd like to say that in this country at the moment, there's a very strong perception that all Muslims are pious, mosque-going, and deeply conservative. We can see evidence of it in the newspapers today as the government thrashes about trying to find some kind of answer to the appeal of jihad among young British Muslims. It and the sudden proliferation on our streets of many more women dressed in increasingly extreme forms of religious attire. It's easy to form the opinion when reading the newspapers and watching TV reports that behind the veneer of reassurance all Muslims are really fanatics. But it just isn't true. As those who have been involved with CEMB know, many people born and raised in an environment where Islam rules long to break out of the straitjacket that constrains their individuality and their freedom of spirit. They long to break out of the religion that they've been told probably every day of their lives, that it's part of their racial identity, indeed part of their DNA. Many have come, become convinced that Islam is entirely inseparable from who they are. To such people, the concept of rejecting Islam seems an impossibility. It's not just undoable, it's unthinkable. They know that if they were even to voice mild doubts or raise any questions, they would feel immediate heat from their families, their neighbors, and from the structures within their communities. In some parts of the world, even thinking such a thought out loud or putting it on a blog can get you killed. Apostasy for many Muslims is the ultimate sin. But even despite the, possibility, the potentially dire consequences, some still take the plunge and walk away from Islam. It's more feasible to do this in some places than in others, but in no place is it easy. At one time, such doubters, if they decided not to stay silent and to act on their feelings, would have been on their own. They would have found rejection not only from their own community and family, but from the wider society, which can be cruelly racist. Now there's an organization which is rapidly transforming into a movement which can offer reassurance, fellowship, and sometimes practical help. It's the CEMB, of course, and in the years since it started, it has helped hundreds of people directly and has given inspiration and hope to thousands around the world. At the NSS, we receive frequent emails from places like Pakistan and Bangladesh and Morocco from people who cannot bring themselves to believe what Islam teaches, but have no idea how to escape its clutches. We feel helpless in the face of this, and what can we do? I'm pleased that the NSS has been able to support the CEMB from time to time, and we've been involved since the very beginning. But resources are limited. We're small and unpopular. We struggle to raise funds for essential work while religious bodies swim in money. We in the free thinking movement are constantly teetering. Although we have many sympathizers, we do not have millionaires leaving as their vast estates as the religions do. But the CEMB is an important organization, a vital organization that deserves to be able to help and inspire more. It's an organization that represents freedom of thought, freedom of self-determination, and is promoting a revolutionary idea to Muslims around the world. The idea is a simple one, and it's this. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to follow it. It's a simple idea, but one that might one day, admittedly in the far distance future, change the world. So congratulations to Marianne for creating this wonderful organization, and happy birthday. Thank you very much, Kerry.